Hello, and welcome to Live Like the World is Dying, your podcast that is currently a YouTube show instead of a podcast for what feels like the end times. I'm your host, Margaret Kiljoy. This episode, again, which is weird because it's not actually an episode of this podcast because I'm doing it on my phone to do video, I'm going to be talking about emergency kits. These are what I keep in, well, I keep one in my backpack and, you know, I encourage my friends to keep them in the trunks of cars and things like that. This is, this is what I distribute. Instead of believing specifically in a go bag system, I like a, a more modular system where you start by everyday carry. I, for example, besides keys, wallet, phone, also usually have a pocket knife, a tourniquet, a tactical flashlight. What the fuck else do I carry? A multi-tool. And sometimes I don't carry the tourniquet, I'll be real. Then you would expand onto that by having this uh, emergency kit with you. And the emergency kit is three things. It's a hygiene kit. It's a survival kit. It's a first aid kit. It's all three in one. So let's go through it then, shall we? First, survival kit stuff. A whistle. Whistles are way underrated. They're absolutely incredibly important for especially hikers and also in tactical situations for when you're lost, signaling to people, communicating things, etc. I carry a small one like this and then at home I keep one of the huge, well it's not huge, it's like this big, hurricane whistles um, in order if I needed to try and communicate to my neighbors. A lighter. This is the single most important and useful method of fire starting that humanity has ever created the Bic lighter or, you know, the butane lighter. These things basically always work unless it's below freezing, in which case you might want alternate sources. They're not always the best for starting fires in wet environments, but they are incredibly reliable. If you keep two of them around, they'll almost certainly always be working. And if you need to keep them warm and it's cold out, you can keep them like in your pockets, in your sleeping bag, like, I don't know, in your underwear, whatever, whatever you want. A Fresnel lens. I never use this. It is for starting fires or maybe looking at maps really close but they weigh nothing they're cheap they're light i don't know why not fucking carry one you look super cool when you know how to start a fire with one which i don't a compass this part's super important the little shitty compasses that come built into everything don't work very well like you know if you have like a knife with a fucking like compass on the back or whatever or a fire starter with a compass on the back it's probably not going to do a very good job however a simple orienteering compass you don't actually need to know how to do crazy orienteering to make it useful it comes with a mirror Woo. Um, which you can also use for signaling and It'll just tell you what fucking direction you're walking so you don't walk in circles. Or you can learn how to actually do orienteering with, with maps. The emergency blanket. Emergency mylar blanket. These are fucking so good. One saved my life when I was like, I don't know, 12 or 13 and the rain got in the tent. It was my birthday. It was not a very good birthday. And I pretty much was in a real bad situation in a wet sleeping bag too weak to move. I eventually called out loud enough for someone to come rescue me. Uh, got naked, got an emergency blanket in someone else's tent. My own body warmth kept me alive that December morning when it was like 35 degrees out. So I swear by them ever since. I've never used one again. I hope I never need to use one again. They're shitty blankets. They're not like, I'm going to be comfortable now. I'm, I have a fucking blanket. Not at all. It just keeps you from not dying in some situations. Very good. Water filtration. Woo. Okay, so like I actually personally prefer to use a ceramic water filter whenever possible. Um, I relied on one. I live off grid. Uh, I relied on one for the first several months of the pandemic, filter my water. But in an emergency situation, these are light, cheap. Check all the boxes. You can figure out how to use them. You add them to water. It keeps the water from murdering you. A credit card multi tool. I kind of hate all in one survival gadgets, and this is the only exception that I like because it's just actually really practical and handy. I almost never use it. The only time I've been carrying one in my wallet for years, but I had to use a screwdriver once and I didn't have access to one. It's just, there's almost no reason not to have this thing that's actually shitty at everything, but capable of doing a lot of different things. Emergency fuel tablet. This is a small fuel tablet. You can set it on fire. It does, it burns, it makes things hot. It burns for a while, you can do it in wet conditions. There's no real reason not to have one or two of these around. Tinder. You can buy whole packets of these for super cheap and then put them in little Ziploc bags. 
Um, this is just for extra fire starting help. If you live somewhere in a wet climate, you understand how sometimes you need a little bit of extra fire starting help if you're trying to start a campfire. A signal mirror. There's no real reason to carry one of these if you have one on your compass, but again, light, cheap, no reason not to. Petroleum jelly. You could also put this in your, you could call this a first aid part, but I'm actually probably more likely to use this uh, on tinder as to prolong how long it burns than I am to use it as a first aid material personally. An eight-way key. This might not be the first priority for your bag. It's kind of a like sort of specialized thing. Basically, it's a ton of little wrenches and things that can do things like turn off the gas in a building or turn on the water at a rest area. Uh, it can do a lot of things that you might need to do in an emergency situation. A monocular. I don't know if you can see that. Uh, monoculars are super, well, they're mostly just fun. You can use them. Um, train hoppers use these a lot to actually be looking at the trains and figuring out the numbers on the trains to figure out what they can ride. I use it mostly to watch birds, and theoretically you could also use them in tactical situations. A P-38. There's also P-51s, which are slightly larger. This is a military-style can opener. Dirt cheap, super light. I relied on one of these attached to a spork for many, many years. Spork not pictured, because mine's currently in my house, because I use it to eat. Fishing kit. This is fish hooks and line. I use 30 feet of line, and when I say I use, I have not successfully fished in a... Well, I, you know, fished a few times as a kid, but I'm vegan now, and I wouldn't eat fish outside of an emergency situation but I sure would in an emergency situation, and maybe you would sooner. A mask. I probably don't need to tell you why you need one of these. Super glue. This could either be first aid or survival stuff. I don't tend to use this medically. Some people do use them medically to close up small wounds on your hands if you're gonna need to keep using your hands. This is not the same shit that they use as wound closures in the hospital. Super glue is not really meant to hold wounds together, but it can do that. Um, I use it mostly for small, well, personally, I use it mostly for woodworking, but theoretically, I keep it in my bag for small emergency repairs of objects. A live like the world is dying emergency survival kit explainer. Um, at some point, I'll put PDFs up of these online, but I haven't done so yet because I'm updating it currently, and soon I'll be printing them on waterproof paper. Tells you how to use everything that's in here. A ridiculous fantasy dagger. Wait, no. Dental floss. Dental floss is both useful for dental hygiene, but is also decent thread. It's actually very good thread for sewing. It's very strong. For years, my pants were entirely held together with dental floss, like all good crust punks. Sewing needles. I keep both leather needles, which have blades on them, which are very good for leather and other hard materials, but are not good for any fabric with threads. And then I keep regular needles for sewing with thread. I would also consider keeping some webbing and other sort of maybe patches of canvas and things around in order to make emergency repairs. Next up, the hygiene part. First, and you might not bother with this in yours, but um, I believe it is worth the weight and size to have baby powder around. Baby powder is really good for keeping areas dry, which if you're in a wet climate and you don't have immediate access to hygiene on a regular basis can be very important to fight fungal infections. It also can be used for anti-chafing if you have to walk a lot and your body is not currently excited about walking a lot without shaving. Sunscreen. Fucking wear sunscreen if you're prone to burning and you're, like, you don't want to be goddamn burned if you're in a bad situation, right? So why not keep some of this around? I don't personally use this type in a little packet on my day-to-day -day life, but I do use it. Well, I would use it if I needed to. Nail clippers, what I probably should have used before I started this episode. Earplugs. Earplugs are really important for when you are sleeping in crowded environments, such as hectic environments where things are happening, but you actually need to sleep. Uh, they're also useful for shooting. They're also useful for if you're going to concerts. They're also useful if other people are shooting. Travel toothbrush and toothpaste. This shit's important. You don't want fucking cavities. Tampons. Whether or not you bleed, I personally believe carrying tampons is always a good idea because other people who do menstruate might want them. These are not first aid. These are not for sticking in bullet wounds. These are not for sopping up mess of blood. Um, they are meant to absorb blood. They are not meant to put pressure on wounds and stop bleeding. So they don't actually serve that purpose very well at all. You want gauze for that. Possibly even just random cloth, according to medic friends. Better than a tampon. However, 
They're really good for when you're menstruating, if you need one. And you should carry them in case someone else around you needs them. Why be a fucking asshole? Condoms and lube. These are actually for sex. They are not I mean, okay, there's like, um, everyone has like, here's a million different things you can use a, for a condom for an emergency situation. And maybe those are true. You can hold water in them. You can put it over the barrel of your rifle when you're hunting so that water doesn't get into it. You can do a bunch of stuff with it, right? Uh, however, the primary purpose I advocate them for them is uh, pregnancy and STI prevention because the apocalypse makes for strange bedfellows and pregnancy is a thing that should be chosen also, the emergency use ones would be unlubricated, and unlubricated ones are substantially less uh, useful for certain types of sex. Tweezers. Tweezers are useful for pulling ticks off, splinters out, for pulling debris out of bad wounds, and for keeping your eyebrows better than mine. Emergency. It wouldn't be an emergency kit without emergency. Yeah, it would. Okay. Not my best pun. These are important as electrolytes, which are way the fuck overrated for hydration. It is an important part of hydration, but big Gatorade actually causes people to overhydrate by convincing you that all you need is electrolytes all the time. You need more water, more water, more hydration, more hydration. But they are useful for that. And personally, I use them for vitamins and a little bit of energy in the morning. A compressed towel. This is like a moist towelette without the moist. You add water to this and it becomes about the size of a washcloth. And hygiene is way important. Take it from someone who's lived off-grid most of her adult life and currently lives off-grid. Finally, the first aid stuff. A syringe. This is a water syringe. And you fill it with water and you use it to irrigate wounds. Deeper wounds that are harder to clean. Cleaning wounds is super important. Trauma shears. These are also your scissors, um, besides the ones that you might have on your multi-tool. Trauma shears are used for cutting off clothes in first aid situations. They have a little blunted tip so they don't hurt people. Moleskin. I don't put this in all of them. Different people treat blisters differently. I grew up putting moleskin around my blisters uh, when I'm hiking, and I find it useful. I like having this around. A bandage, an elastic bandage. This can be really good for sprains. It can also be used to hold wounds in place, like um, hold gauze and shit over a wound. Medical tape. Probably most kits will have a smaller amount of medical tape than this, but this is what I had around, so it goes into my kit. Alcohol prep swabs. Alcohol prep swabs are for... Everyone agrees that alcohol prep swabs are for prepping an area. If you need to sterilize equipment, like tweezers or needles or things like that, you can use this. You can also use it on the surface of your skin before you do any, like, stitching or whatever the fuck. Other people use them to clean wounds. This is contraindicated by most doctors. It's contraindicated because it slows down healing like hydrogen peroxide does also. However, some street medics tend to use this anyway in certain situations where time is of the essence. You don't want to let anyone get infected. You're willing to slow down healing in exchange for that extra little bit of uh, safety when you don't have time to use soap and water. Soap and water is what you want to use to clean wounds. Alcohol is what you can use but will also damage you. Make up your own mind. I'm not a fucking doctor. Diphenhydramine, also called Benadryl, but you can also just get it as diphenhydramine. I think I got it right the first time. Anyway, this is like an allergy pill. It also can help with anxiety and it can help with sleep. Butterfly bandages, you can also use steris strips. They're the same idea. They're basically like bandage type stitches. You can use them to keep wounds closed temporarily. Caffeine gum is so that you have caffeine on you, and this is the most uh, packageable version of it. I've most packaged version of it I found. I usually give it to my friends who are driving, who are too tired to drive, but need to drive anyway. Band aids. You want a bunch of band aids, different sizes. You don't want to get things infected when you're in an off grid situation. It's just better to avoid it entirely. Keep dirt out of wounds. Triple antibiotic ointment for the same reason you want to avoid infection. If you're starting to get an infection, you use this, and often, sometimes you use this at the very start under the Band-Aid, no matter what. Lopiramide. I don't know how to pronounce that. It's an anti-diarrheal. You use it to avoid diarrhea, which, if you are in an emergency situation, you want to make sure that the food that you take, um, that you keep the nutrients that you take, and diarrhea can be a very bad thing for keeping water and food inside you. A 12-gauge hunting shotgun. Nope. No, that doesn't fit in the bag either. 
Iosat. I don't know, it's fucking, it's iodine. They're iodine pills. The reason you take, you keep these around is you keep them around in case there's nuclear fallout. In case of nuclear fallout, you have like 15 minutes to take one of these to keep your thyroid gland full of iodine so that it doesn't take in ra irradiated iodine from the fallout. This, you only have about 15 minutes after an emergency broadcast tells you that you have to take these in order to take these. So while it will almost certainly never come up in your life, they're light, they're cheap, there's no reason to not to have a bunch of them around your house. Painkillers and anti-inflammatories and anti-fever drugs. There's three main different types. There's acetaminophen power rangers, and there's ibuprofen, and there's aspirin, which is sometimes called Tylenol and Advil, maybe vice versa. I don't fucking know. Um, why am I teaching things that I don't know? That's a good question. I keep that shit written down. Basically, these are three different types for different, slightly different situations, and you should look up how to use them and keep some of them around. And that's about it for what I keep in this size of bag. I also keep a larger go bag with some more stuff if I thought I was going to be if I had more time and I was going to grab something, whatever. The thing I like about these kits is that you just basically have like certain certain things with you everywhere. Most of the time, I really am just using it as like, I forgot my toothbrush. There's other things that you might want to put in this bag that I haven't put in mine. And if so, you should let me know in the comments down below. Because if you do, the reason every YouTuber says to do this is because it drives engagement. If you comment, then more people will ever see the video. So actually, all of you people who are just here to comment about how I'm not really a woman or whatever the fuck your opinion is about me as a trans person, you can put that down below too, and that'll just drive engagement to my video. And thank you haters who do so much work to put out the good word. One thing I don't keep in these bags is I don't keep food and water in these bags because the things in this bag either don't expire or take a very long time to expire, and I want to be able to just leave this bag and forget about it. I do recommend that you keep food and water on hand separately. I personally like these single wall steel canteens because you can boil water in them if you need to. For emergency food, I like to keep these around because I hate the way they taste. I fucking hate chocolate chip cliff bars. And because of that, I don't eat them. And therefore I have them when I'm hungry instead of when I'm just snacky. That's it for the first Live Like the World is Dying YouTube episode. If you'd like to see more of them, please like and subscribe and tell your friends and shit. And if enough people seem to get anything out of this, I can do more gear reviews and more emergency preparedness stuff. Possibly also things about off-grid living if people are curious.